Jean-Claude? Jean-Claude, can I ask you a favor? Can you go outside the door? There is just outside the door on your left, there is a, a button. You press it for the ring, please. So that. Maybe Miriam. Maybe Miriam. <laughs> Okay, all right. So, welcome back, and let's start a new lecture by Fatima Benassaya for University of Bejaia, Algeria. Fatima has prepared a very nice lecture with case study on uh, plant biomonitoring to assess uh, exposition to um, pollutants. Yes. So, the floor is yours, Fatima. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Last time uh, we saw um, uh, methods about biomonitoring using plants. Tomorrow we will see a case study uh, which is carried in Bijaya city. Uh, Bijaya, which is uh, a Mediterranean, Algerian Mediterranean uh, region. There are uh, many studies about uh, air pollution in there. Uh, maybe there is no equipment, but uh, there is some studies which, which, uh, which are done there. Uh, all of them uh, shows, uh, showed that uh, the main source of pollution in there is uh, automobile. This is one case study. Uh, about estimating uh, of uh, ox uh, uh, nitrogen oxides. This is for three uh, pollutants. Uh, sorry. So uh, the, it, it shows. It shows uh, this figure uh, show that uh, uh, the main source of pollution is automobile. Others about uh, particulate, the same shows that the, uh, the main source is uh, automobile and, it, uh, and the, the concentration uh, raise over the OM, uh, World Health Organization limits. So the, the, the study is uh, about uh, um, Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, which are mutagenetic and um, uh, car car which have uh, mutagenic and carcinogenic pro uh, properties. <coughs> Very, uh, many studies uh, in Europe and uh, uh, over the world are done in this subject. But uh, in Bijaya, which uh, show a uh, high level for other pollutants, there is no study uh, uh, concerning this uh, the, the, the concerning this pollutant. In this context, this study aimed at testing uh, the use of petunia hybrida uh, and the Xanthoria parent. Perientina for detecting pH, pH pollutant concentration in this area. So uh, the effects of this pollutant in plants is mainly necrosis, uh, chlorosis, chlorosis and for ethylene, for example, if there are uh, 0 0.01 uh, PM, ppm, uh, the, it causes loss of uh, uh, buds in tomatoes and peppers. Here are some uh, species used in biomonitoring of this pollutant. First, petunia, which is uh, a bioindicator of ethylene and formaldehyde. Uh, some mousses also are used to detect uh, this pollutant. And there, there are others, for example, uh, needles 
are also used to detect uh, this organic pollutant and lichens like uh, Exontoria are used to bioaccumulate the uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. For the study area, which is Bijaya, so uh, I tell that it's, uh, I told that it's uh, um, origin, a Mediterranean region which is situated in the east of Algeria. For the sampling, um, the collection of the samples, for the petunia, we have uh, eight, uh, we have eight different We have eight different um, uh, stations uh, in the urban area of Bijaya, and we have a seat control uh, in rural uh, station, which is Imdan, uh, which is uh, 35 kilometers from uh, the urban area of Bijaya. And for lichens, we have taken... Okay. Thank you. And for lichens, we taken a seat from Taharasht, which is uh, uh, an industrial seat. The characteristic of the meteorological parameters are uh, resumed in the table. So we have uh, taken seven, um, seven measurements. Uh, in average, one, one measurement a week for petunia. And the procedure uh, for petunia is that we take in seeds, um, uh, we, we cultivate seeds uh, with the same condition for six weeks, and then we, uh, ex uh, we put them to the exposure in the, the seed of uh, monitoring. So uh, 60 plants are used in 10 stations, in 10 seeds uh, for six weeks, and 10 morphological parameters are taken in consideration. Uh, in each uh, measurement, we take the number of flowers. We uh, also take the diameter of flowers, general growth, leaf size, number of necrosis leaves, length of the internode, number of a bordered button, and in the, final, in the end of the experience, we take the dry weights of plants. For lichens, uh, samples are taken uh, from one meter for, from the ground, and uh, uh, we take for each tree of olive, uh, olive we take uh, uh, three samples, uh, depending to the direction, north, east, west, and south. The Xontoria is so a folio, a folios lichen, which, is, uh, or, which has a yellow color. We have to complete this uh, data sheet for each tree. And uh, at the laboratory, uh, we um, used a technique which is taken from AFNOR, the standard uh, the norm of lichens. Uh, realized by uh, Afnor. For the lichens, we taken uh, the, the preparation technique used for uh, lichens. We take um, 0 0.6 gram uh, of lichens. We uh, put them in the Soxley to, uh, for, th for two hours. So uh, to extract uh, the hydrocarbons, and then this is the procedure. 
for the, uh, the, the, the preparation of samples. When we recuperate uh, the, uh, the, 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 the sample, we uh, pass it to the chromatography uh, analytic uh, technique to know the, the category of hydrocarbon content in the uh, lichen. For the result concerning lichens, we measured two uh, parameters. We measured the chlorophyll because it's uh, uh, content which reflect the, uh, the chlorosis of the, the, the plant. So we find uh, a, 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 different, a significant difference between control seed which is uh, taken in the rural, rural uh, station, and uh, other seats which are uh, urban or industrial. So we have uh, 568 microgram per gram uh, dry matter for the control, whereas it's uh, 1.27 for the industry, the, the, the seat industry used. The second uh, parameter uh, taken is the content, so the, it's our objective, the, the content on uh, hydrocarbons. So we, uh, uh, we find also a diff uh, significant difference between control and other seats. For Petunia, uh, results shows uh, a rise of uh, about general growth. So when we take in a general growth of the plant in uh, all of the stations, we remarked that there is an increase of, uh, uh, of values. But the diameter flowers we show, uh, we, we, we see uh, there is uh, uh, stability of uh, increasing in uh, values. Uh, number of necrosis leaves, it's uh, different between uh, stations. We, we, show, we, we, we see here for example, for the station of uh, Lagarde, uh, the, the, the value uh, are less than other stations. Results show the uh, correlation between uh, morphological parameters and the, uh, the measurement taken about uh, a particle, uh, fin fine particle. We had uh, <coughs> R, which is, which is equal uh, 0 0.8. And Dawaji, which, which is a uh, urban station, uh, shows the, uh, the, the, biggest, <laughs> the biggest value of uh, PM. Uh, uh, particulate, uh, uh, fine particulate. <coughs> when we compare the results with the, the control, we, find, we found that uh, the, the station Dewaji, uh, Abariu, and Ville have uh, a, dif a significant difference uh, with the control because they are, the, uh, are urban uh, areas. The same for the mean flower number. Uh, also, Dewaji, Amario, and Ville shows the uh, difference, uh, different, uh, significant, uh, difference, significant. Also, the mean flower diameter, Ville, Dewaji. Uh, and Ihdad Nusi is a uh, uh, urban station.
number of necrosis slaves also shows difference between Amrio, uh, Por, Lagar, Erel Azui, and uh, the control. Weight, dry weight also shows the same results. It shows that Dawaji, Vil, Eril Azui are the uh, most uh, polluted seeds. Regarding the factorial correspondence analysis, uh, we have two groups of parameters. Parameters uh, of um, damage, the group of uh, parameters of damage, which are the number of uh, uh, necrosis leaves, and the second group, which are the, gro the general growth of plants, which are the internode and the flower diameter and others. Uh, at, th at the end, we, 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 we the number of plants is 30 in the, in the fr uh, in the beginning, we, have, uh, we had uh, 60. This is the vandalism that, we, uh, that I, um, I mentioned the last time, the, um, the, the disadvantages of um, active monitoring is that there is vandalism. Others, they, they, people take the 30 others uh, plants, so it, it uh, it rests only 30 uh, plants at the, at the end. Uh, it shows so Lagar so station, Lagar, Terga, Irilor, Zoy, Ehdeden are grouped because they are uh, far from far from the the automobile source pollution. Uh, but Amario, uh, Dewaji, which are uh, the, 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 the urban uh, seats are far from the other seats. So this uh, work uh, conducted in Bijaya showed that uh, are, uh, showed that Petunia uh, is uh, montre the um, morphological characteristics. Uh, that shows that th there is uh, air pollution about uh, um, hydrocarbon. The result shows also that there is a difference in chlorophyll content in uh, xanthorium. But uh, it's a modest study. It's not. Uh, uh, it's it, it not. It, it, it not reflect the real, uh, the real situation, and that uh, for uh, for that for uh, it's the the it be, it must be completed by others uh, method monitoring method. Studies in biomonitoring continue in Bijaya, but not only uh, for these two uh, species. Uh, and then we have recently provided the new uh, uh, hydrocarbon aromatic polycyclic estimate in other regions uh, of Cabellia, and uh, analysis are going for Guira and Tiziuzo. Uh, so um, last night we saw an indis, uh, an indis atmospheric of purity. I prepared for you an exercises how to calculate it. Uh, you, Dorothy, so we'll send you an Excel sheet. Uh, I give you uh, this formula. And then we try together to calculate this uh, index. So uh, the index atmospheric purity equal the sum of uh, Q uh, multiply, multiply 
per um, frequency divided by 10. The, where uh, n is number of species, q is the factor of accompanying species, the factor of accompanying species q, so is calculated like this. We have only one station in the example, so uh, we have to, to sum, to addition only the, uh, the, the samples. We have uh, eight samples, dividing by by M, which is the number of stations where the species of interest is present. And then the F is the cover. Cover, it is given in the exercise, is given by frequency in percentage. You have to uh, translate it to a brown blanket um, level. So uh, when uh, the frequency is um, they pass uh, 75, the, it means that it's, uh, the, the F equal 5. Okay, thank you very much. Is it, it's so okay. we can yeah. start. Uh, do you want any question now, Fatima? Or before, uh, what do you, we start the exercise? Or? Like you want it. Okay, so. To, uh, if you have question, of course, about the, this modest study. Have you understand the the, uh, the the case study? This is our last case study of the school, so you should have received it now. Okay, so no no special question. Okay, so do we make group, uh, Fatima? Do you want that people work in group or they work as, alone? As, as, as they like. Okay. Okay, so everybody makes a, so we will uh, make, there will be just uh, a debriefing like that. Okay, yeah. Okay. The mail I've just sent it is, as the address is dorothy.moison at gmail.com. So mail you should have received it. Some of you have uh, received it? Yes, okay, so that's the good news. The other one should receive it too. You have 15 minutes. You've got 15 minutes, Max. Certains qui ont commencé, il y a d'autres qui travaillent sur...
Bonjour, combien du temps d'ici L'aéroport. Non, bon, normalement, j'ai suffisamment du temps pour arriver. the certificate here they're going to be given outside well okay. just at the end of the closure one certificate here a photo of Samane okay uh, so if we could just put it here okay when uh, when I just give it on in front of the camera just for the people to know who she is mm -hmm. <coughs>
still have five minutes, counting time.
Time is running out. <laughs> and now time is out. <laughs> it runs very fast. <laughs> Fatima. Fatima? <laughs> Let's go. I, I guess now we have to to make the correction. So if you don't mind. Fatima, you want to I let you have another. We correct. No, just uh, uh, the the first column. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, we correct. So, uh, to calculate the, 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 the Q, we have, we have to calculate the number of accompanying uh, species. Of, for each species, for example, for the first one, it's uh, the first one, it exists in the seat one, seat two, seat three, seat six, and seat seven. And the number of uh, uh, accompanying species in the first seat is 12, right? In the second, in the second is 8. The number of spe accompanying species for the first in the second seat is 8, is it? And in the third, the number of accompanying species is 9. The total is 10, the number of accompanying is 9. So we have to uh, addition the, 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 uh, the, the number of accompanying species here. Uh, where is it? Uh, accompanying. So here, it's 39 for all of seats. For the first, uh, for the first species, there, uh, it's accompanied by 36 species. We have to divide this number by the uh, number of seats, which is five. The species exist in five seats, so it is 7.8. You do the same for all other species. You have so a Q, which is between seven and 11 uh, and 13. Yes? Uh, Fatima, sorry. I, I hardly understand about the calculation. Maybe you could help us by putting the, the, the cursor on the, on the number so we can know the formula. How do you calculate that number? Thank you. Just to click on the cell, is that you mean? On the cell, okay. Yeah. L, L colon, L colon. Cell one, L colon. L, L colon. Yeah, and cell one. 
Sorry. Ah, the, the, the formulas are not in the sheet. Q, so is, is the number, is the number, Q is the number of species accompanying the, uh, the, 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 the concerning species. We, for the first, for example, species, yes, we, we want to, uh, Q is calculated for each species, okay? Q1, which is the Q of the species one, is equal the number of the total number of accompanying these species in each seat. We addition, we addition the, 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 the sum of uh, species accompanying this space, species. Okay? For the first seat, there are 13. There are 13 species. So, how much species accompanying the first species? In this, in this seat, in this seat, in this seat one, how much species accompanying the first? Twelve. Twelve. Uh, but you, you, uh, because perhaps uh, accompanying species is not the, the, the term in English. Accompanying. This is accompaniatrice. Twelve. Uh, uh, it's, uh, yes, itself plus 12 species, the total is 13. The, the seed is, for example, a tree. Imagine the seed is the tree. The station, we have the station, for example, here in this, uh, uh, in this area, we taken eight trees and we do the samples from uh, one meter from the ground. Yeah, you take uh, we, we take the, the degree uh, of uh, 50 uh, centimeters and we quantify the frequency of each species. For the first tree, we find five species, uh, we find 13 species, okay? But the species which interest us is the first to calculate the Q. The number of accompanying species is 12. And then, for the first, uh, the first, the first, the first uh, did you see, uh, did you see before a table of, uh, uh, of results more of flower, flower? Uh, yes, did you? Yeah, okay, it's when we, you, you see a frequency is the presence of the species, okay? The frequency, the, the, the species ha has a frequency, it means that it exists in the seat one, for example, in the seat two, seat three. So in the, the uh, for, for Q, we, uh, we just uh, look the existence of the species. It exists, okay, one, two, three. So we have 13 species for the first seat. We have eight for the second, 10 for the third, etc. So 30, 30, 30, uh, 39 is the number of accompanying species of the first species. For it, so it's 12, yes, 12 plus seven plus nine plus uh, six plus six yes plus six plus plus one yeah yes 
Move to the second. The second is uh, more simple. It exists only in the in two in two seats, in the six and the uh, in the in the seven and the eight seat. Is it? The, the second. Uh, the second, uh, yeah, it exists only in the seven, yes? The number of accompanying uh, species in this case is seven, my, mine's, yes, six, six, yes? Six divided by, by one because it exists only in one seat. We divided it, we divided it by one, yes? I given in the formula in uh, before you Q, Q. We have to calculate Q now. We, ca we calculate we calculate Q. Q is the sensitivity on quelque sorte uh, uh, sensi sensitivity of the species. Uh, sensitivity, for example, for uh, the, the second uh, is is not sensible, is not uh, uh, sensitive uh, species. It exists, although malgré uh, other species don't exist really for the second for the second uh, species. It exists, it exists, although other species don't exist. So it's tolerant to the stress. In, the, in this environment. Yeah. Yeah. You get uh, uh, how much? 43? Uh, 12? Uh, 7. Alizi, 19, 19, okay, uh, 39, 39, okay, uh, this is, so for, for, for Q, for Q, is, is the principle is this, to calculate for each species, you calculate okay. the, uh, for each species, you calculate the number of accompanying, uh, accompanying species, or, oh, um, uh, uh, great. Fatima, yes, yes, I, I think that we are, more, we are way out of time, so I suggest that maybe make a, a correction, something on the uh, print, you, yeah? You have, uh, With, the... Can you add the formulas in the, in the Excel sheet so that the people can follow the calculation? And then maybe we can uh, send it over to everybody. Yes. And okay. uh, they, okay. you, they can interact okay. with you on the internet, on, on by mail. But I'm sorry, we, we need to move on. Thank you very much, Fatima. So now it's Carla, the lecture about the recommendation on the way you should communicate uh, risk. I include some, including? including some few slides on uh, how to do a systematic review because uh, most of them asked for that lesson. So, uh, courtesy. But I will be quick. 20. Just an advice at 20, yeah. Allora, sempre in corsi, Trieste, si chiama recommendation, reporting. No, la pelotta, sì, perfetto. Okay. Uh, okay. We we the time is, is really short, so you can read the presentations after because everybody will be available for you to read and to use. 
my message is use these lights, organize your own seminars in your place, and try to share the knowledge with other colleagues that are not here. Okay, so that's the, the second, the, the why. Uh, we have talked all the, all the week, uh, saying, okay, you can take that from the literature, you can use already published studies, uh, uh, you can, you can, how? Okay, it, we, we know that there is a body of literature that can be used when we are in the phases of, of hypothesis uh, creating. Maybe you, you don't even you don't even have a, a clear hypothesis. You want to you know consolidate and formulate a proper one. So my suggestion is go to the literature and have a look at what is already uh, published, already available. So we want to. We will have several published papers, and we want to uh, conclude something. What, what are they saying? So, and the body of literature is extremely uh, high. I mean, as uh, in the internet, Google time, it's really easy to, uh, to put. Also, there are a lot of uh, um, online um, journal, uh, open access, so you don't have to pay to download the paper, but there are a lot. I mean, it's, it's really most. So what you can do, you should be so good in select the best study, the, what, the one that guarantee you a few bias. Biases means mistakes, error, uh, something inside the articles that can, can have affected the results. Having a public um, a, paper, a study published doesn't mean that the study is a very good one. So you should be able to judge among what is available in the literature. And also you want to conclude, you want a relative risk, you want one estimate of the effect. So you have to move between the narrative reviews and the systematic reviews. As you say here, the, the, it's, it's quite simple because we have uh, a lot of publications, including grey literature. Grey literature are the reports. I mean, the, the report that maybe you can write down for your own uh, public health or ministry uh, or in grey literature also go the abstracts presented at, at the meeting, for example. The difference the differences between grey literature and uh, published, I mean, uh, good literature is the peer review systems. When, it, when a paper is published, other colleagues before the publication have judged the results and asked for clarification, do I get the analysis you can do like that, please uh, say something else because the discussion are very poor. So that, that we, we can have uh, good quality paper, a less good quality paper, and everything is narrative, I mean, it's useful if you want to have an idea. Then you can, a narrative review simply is, is a kind of when you write down your thesis, you read all the articles, and then you try to, you know, to describe in order the first, the second, the third, but in a systematic review, the criteria are very strict. I mean, you need experts to do that. There is statistical analysis, a systematic review, include uh, a search strategy that should have, that have to be defined in advance in a protocol. So it's science. It's something that can be, we know because we are scientists, and sometimes if the quality of the articles are similar, if there are few risk of heterogeneity, you can also provide an estimate, a medium estimate of the results, which is the meta-analytic estimates. So the meta-analysis is something inside the systematic reviews, and the systematic reviews are part of a narrative reviews. So it, it's on you. It depends on your skill, of what you want to do, and if you need it, uh, if the meta-analytic 
estimates uh, is useful or not. Uh, so we have a lot of problems in narrative reviews because you know there is no peer review, you can do whatever you want, you can include only uh, positive results, exclude, just include maybe for us as we are not uh, English speakers, uh, uh, you know, have, getting published in, in, uh, in Italian in an article in my own language can be possible in Italy, but not outside Italy. So even if a very good study, but published in, in Italian, in an Italian journal, cannot be accepted in a systematic reviews because usually they include people, that, uh, papers that they can read. So in English, that can be also a bias. Uh, and on the opposite, the systematic uh, uh, review approach is very useful and you can read the slide. Be careful in red that also a very well conducted systematic review has problem because once a paper is published, it's old. Because maybe you uh, are the, the um, uh, how to say the, the peer review process sometimes takes months three, four, six months, and maybe you write down your study a year after the, the experiment is finished. So maybe it, it can take a couple of years getting published, and then all the results are related to something uh, described in the past. So all, by definition, all the systematic review include uh, a retrospective approach, so the, the, the validity of, the, of a systematic re, re, um, review strongly depends on the papers that you as researchers decide to include or not. So there is a step, steps, a protocol that can be followed. Uh, I, I, I think we have not time to read uh, in, uh, in details uh, these steps, but they are available on the study. All the steps are very important. Um, but as all the science, all the research, be brave in formulate. Uh, so you try to take a picture, go. <laughs> but there will be the, 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 on, on the website. So formulating the question is really, really very important. There is this statement called PICO, which says, it says, it says that you have very well have in, mind, have in mind participants' inclusion. We, we, in this case, we are not talking about people, we are talking about studies. What study I have to include, what I have to exclude. So participants, the exposure, definition, the comparison, and the outcomes. And you can find the approach in these uh, published journalists you can download for free. And the system is called Navigation Guide for uh, Systematic Review in Environmental Epidemiology. So the search strategy, we, we want to find articles, what we can do. Uh, you need maybe for the very first time, uh, someone uh, that already have done it. We call it an information specialist. There are uh, scientists as well. Uh, they come from different fields of research, even from, uh, you know, PhD in uh, journalism in scientific uh, year in ICTP, they have a program, special program. The suggestion is uh, to search more than what a, one that database, also for search for unpublished studies if possible. If you see at the meeting a colleagues talking about the research, if you, as, as we did in the poster presentation, if we look very interesting results in a poster, but maybe no papers are coming, so no published paper will be a pity. So maybe if you are aware that some studies have been conducted, but maybe they ended not in a published uh, journal, but in a poster presentation or in a congress, ask the authors to send you all the materials and don't put language restriction. How we can do it? We need translators. Because of course, if from Hungary or from Iran, uh, you, you have a very well paper, it, for me as Italian, it's impossible to, to understand. So we need the translation. And uh, the databases, PubMed is most, 
the majority uh, you can find in a good library at your university center. PubMed is very good, it's free. You can uh, download, uh, I mean, uh, just put uh, Google PubMed and you can find the all the abstract. And uh, if the paper is available for free, you can download the, the paper. If it's not, the, the, the journal will ask you a fee to have, uh, to have uh, uh, the paper sent, but my suggestion is write to the author. And most of us are very happy to send uh, the, the a PDF. Uh, it's, it's illegal, but... No, not illegal, eh, from the web, uh, webinar. <laughs> Something that, that is possible to ask for if you don't have the money to, to do in other way. Ah, okay, so, sorry, there is uh, this uh, new research, I mean, I, I'm, I'm old, but it's ResearchGate, register on ResearchGate and use it to share your, your information. It's a, net, it's a network, I think you are already all in, I'm not in, but uh, yes, or also Scopus, I'm in Scopus actually. And uh, let, be good in selecting also grey literatures, report, uh, papers, something uh, not even if it's not peer-reviewed, the governmental acts can be included. And Google. So, a search strategy, we don't, don't have time to go in details. It depends of the hypothesis that you have, but you can uh, Google uh, how to do a search strategy and, and, you, find, uh, and you find some example. Um, but the main focus is in your protocol, please define very well the inclusion and exclusion criteria of your study. For example, which type of studies? Look, we are talking about health, environmental epidemiology. We cannot perform a clinical trial because in a trial, the researcher assigns the exposure. So, for example, for drug to test the efficacy or the effectiveness of a medicine, of drugs, you can divide the, the, the whole sample in two. One will take the pills, the other one will take a placebo, and you can wait for a while and compare the results. If the drug is effective, probably you have a less um, disease or a better outcome in people tracking the drugs. But what about environmental epidemiology? Can we exposure people, expose people to benzene, to dioxin, to nickel, to metals, it's impossible. So in environmental exposure, is the randomization of the exposure is something not ethical. You cannot do, even think of doing that. So in environmental exposure, we are not talking about experiment. We are talking about observational study, because what the researcher can do is observe. What is happen? Everybody are breathing, so maybe one, um, some few of us can be affected by air pollution, I don't know, but we cannot assign the exposure. And so the quality of the conclusion coming from obser observational studies are in some sense lower than the one coming from the experiment. Because in the experiment, the researcher can take all the other aspects fixed and what is the only difference is the exposure and the level of the exposure. Rats in a lab. You can expose rats to dioxin and observe what, what it will happen. We cannot do it for humans. So in humans, you cannot just observe, the, but all other aspects can, are going to influence the results. The diet, the gender, the socioeconomic status, other concomitant environmental exposure. So in epidemiology, the issue is, is, uh, is uh, I skip this one. This is an example. I'm now conducting uh, a systematic review about what is uh, the epidemiological approach used in industrially contaminated sites worldwide. I'm just collecting all the possible industrially contaminated sites all the, uh, around the world because I want to know where is conducted, which kind of epidemiological approach or biomonigon is applied. And we will end with the nice maps of this by, by word. And, it, and you have to publish also the search strategy because people in, are interested in the articles that you 
at the end include it, but also they want to do why you are excluding some uh, published uh, um, study in your review. The bias is the systematic re re review. I told you this is the overall quality of the study. The best one is the experiment, the randomized control trial, but then we have the observational approach. At the end, we have the case series. Once you mentioned we are going to uh, just to include uh, patients from an hospital, we are here in a case sorry, serious panel study. And as you can see, the, the, the level of the overall quality is less than, and because a lot of other factors are, are going to influence your study. But still valid, it's still uh, in, uh, a, a possibility in epidemiology. Uh, why the results can be not so precise? For the sample size, when you said, I'm looking, biomonitoring 15 Say, people and myself, Carla, 1,100, the body, the sample size of my human biomonitoring, even if I'm doing the same, the same uh, study with the same uh, um, exposure assessment methods, with the same methodology, but my sample results will be more precise, the confidence, the confidence interval will be narrow just because of the sample size of the study. And so, which means the real study will have an estimate but a very large imprecision due to the small sample size. Mine may be the same estimate but with narrow confidence interval. The publication bias, I don't know if you are aware of, it was more in the past than now, but I have to tell that positive studies have more chance to get in published. I mean, because you find a risk. The null hypotheses are not really it, In my opinion, it's not anymore like that. But what about if you want to include studies coming from 20 years ago? They're still a part of body of the literature. And finally, the results. The only results of, meta of a systematic review is to publish the search strategy to publish, to include in your article the, uh, in the, follow, the flow chart of the inclusion exclusion criteria, and then the results. And the results are like that. Probably we already have seen it. This is the example that Francesco Forastiere presented two days ago. How does it work? For each line, we have, okay, we have an hypothesis. The hypothesis is to test the association between PM 2.5 and all cause mortality. We were so good that we include the best paper available in the literature. We didn't make any mistakes. All the relevant are here. The bias are, uh, are uh, not included. And the heterogeneity is so small that we can also think about produce meta-analytic estimates. So in each row, there will be a paper. And this is the results of all the papers. See, for example, uh, OK, the, if there is no effect, all the study are all the point that have to stay in this, uh, in this line, the one, sorry, this one, the one line, because one means no effect. Exposed and non-exposed share the same outcome. As you can say, the majority of the studies has on the other side, which means that we can um, uh, tell a relative risk starting from one and going up. And, and what we can see, if the sample size, um, if the, but this is important, if the sample size is big, the confidence interval are very narrow. And in the meta-analytic estimate, which is this one, as we are including everything, we don't have any problem at all. So I know that it's uh, more than that. We had talked about, uh, I finished with the systematic review, but what is important and what is my message for you uh, is please, when you, now we are in the face of communicating the results, having, uh, taking care to include in your communication plans also uh, the most fragile part, part of the 
populations, including the susceptible, because sometimes they ask you what I have to do. Um, from this is from my experience. I work on noise and aircraft noise, so or uh, and, and some disease. Should I move a house? It's not. Oh, it's not possible sometimes to go to another else. What I have to do with my children, with the air pollution is so high that he cannot breathe because he is suffering asthma. Should I consider pollution levels when choosing a school, the example of the school? Maybe you can choose a school which is good for the health of real children in a green area, if possible, instead of in another one. There are different ways of uh, uh, explain the risk. We now already, everybody can tell, explain the dose-response relationship. This is the spiegel artel explanation, more detailed about the person time and the, the, the risk. But look at this. This is very clear. Two cigarettes, it's equal to two beers. It means five kilos more if you are keeping on containing. So sometimes, when, especially if you talk to not a specialist, so specialized people, it's, you, it's good to use some example because to, the, the, to make it clearer. Uh, there is good communication include uh, several aspects uh, and several strategies. I'm not going to read all of it, but this is my advice. Please, as a researcher, you are the responsible of everything. Consistencies in the messages. Sometimes a researcher says something, the politician, after having listened to your presentation, starting to say something else. The journalism in the, 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 the journalist, the, the day of the Congress, of the Congress, take notes and publish other results. You are in charge to follow all these aspects because what it can, is, 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 uh, uh, is important is the consistencies. We cannot you know, as a, we are respons responsible for the diffusion of the information, that should be an internal consensus is very, very high. Now, just quick, but it's uh, nice in my opinion. How can I explain my results? You can choose graphic, uh, maps, tables, limits the tables, use a proper font, not so small, even in the presentation, avoid the very small font because it's impossible to read. Sometimes it's good to mix. Okay, I wanna use a map. What about the colors are important here? It's a mess. How can you judge what, independently of the subject, and we are not talking on that, but you can see it's very, very, having chosen this pattern, it's very difficult for a reader to understand. Uh, this one, a bed for people having uh, the blindness of colors, I don't even remember in Italian, was uh, daltonismo. Uh, daltonic people, they cannot tell the difference between green and red. So if you choose green and red, no, no, it's important. They just say flat, gray. Everything is flat and gray. This is a bad use, too dark. This one, even worse. And this, in my opinion, is an effective map design because you don't, you know, you are not even avoiding red or black when the, the if, because I'm a public health researcher, I should re reassure us people not to create a drama. So this gradation is, uh, can be read, there is no red in, so even people with blindness of color can, uh, can read it. I think I finish just to say that when you create a map, uh, please take care of the level of aggregation that you use because the results can change. And those are all the aspects that you should take in, into account when you, you write down a report for your authorities, for your, not, not a scientific paper, the report of your own health impact assessment. And these are the APA risk communication guidelines, is my, my finish, and I, I like very much this one. Speak clearly, and I'm not good at that, and with compassion because it's important. Don't be neutral. Be on the side of your research. Because if you are going to flatness, I mean, alone, <laughs> the, it will be a mess. So please use the emphasis and uh, sleep, uh, you know, uh, wake up people if they are sleeping when, when you took. Thank you so much. 
I, I, no, no question for this session. No. Do you have? Because we don't have time, no? Yeah, we do. We do? Okay, so. It's French. Okay, no, I mean, just maybe for the first part. In the second part, there's nothing to comment. No, okay. no, no question on the communication. Okay. So we have. I was afraid. So, yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> Yeah, but now we are, uh, with the general discussion is about uh, so free speech. So uh, if you have any question, please for, uh, address them to Carla. Where is Francois? Please raise your hand because... Uh... Towards that uh, last year, I uh, took part in this systematic literature review and thank you very much for the very well um, methodology you gave us. Uh, only maybe... Uh, we could add something about the software I uh, used uh, Mendeley to make um, the literature more structured and then from there I think it was Ryan, then you select which uh, papers you want to include. So Mendeley took the abstracts and the uh, titles and uh, the authors and then from Ryan you can see more in more detail. And read, uh, read that it. The so first, they're well organized. Are you asking about the 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 very first stage or inclusion of the article? Because when you, the very first selection that you can do is based only on the title of the abstract and, mm -hmm. and on title yeah, of the paper you, and the abstract. You select and then you import in Mendeley, and yeah. from there uh, you and import. We use yeah, and, and the yeah. note. Uh, excuse me. That we used. You, we. I mean, when you, if you have to uh, uh, judge. 10 papers, you just download the articles and read it. Uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's, if, if it's not that much, uh, it's not needed. It's not that uh, much yeah, you can yeah. handle. Otherwise, yeah. there are uh, software that yeah, can yeah. help you. One is end note, end, like the end note, uh, which is, uh, the, the license is uh, cheap. It will be around uh, uh, 80 euros per year. So ask you maybe your library to buy, which is very good in managing uh, the, the articles. But to obtain the articles, you should have a librarian to so help you, you maybe ask him, or you can write yourself uh, to the authors and ask for the PDF of the, yeah. of the journal. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, I have just comments. Um, uh, first one is uh, about the, uh, how we ca how uh, when we can download the, the papers. Uh, it should about uh, to pay for downloading it. For students, it's not easy. So there are some other uh, opportunities. There's some site which is uh, Russia from Russia. We can download the, the papers easily. It's maybe it's not um, it's for it's not legally, but we can download it for students. And second, for uh, how we can communicate our, our results. For example, uh, Miriam uh, said that uh, they have some issue to uh, the, the answers that you have received from the peers that uh, the, the studies it was for local uh, issue and limited and interest and only in the Lebanon. I, I have received a message, but I think that if we uh, we can. Uh, um, extract our results from local to regional or international and then present uh, our results uh, uh, safely, we can publish it either without any problem. I think that. Uh, uh, you are right. I mean, there are two ways of communicating, not two ways, two um, sides. I mean, the first one is in, among the international community of researchers, which means for you to go ask for, um, you know, apply, uh, submit abstract in an international congress uh, or, uh, you know, workshops, uh, even other courses like this one, because it's a way to, for you to let the others know what are you doing and what extent. The other one is to get it published in order to be, uh, um, to be read by the other colleagues uh, all around the world. The third aspect is when you have to communicate your results at your local 
level at your decision makers. So that's probably the worst, <laughs> the bad aspect. Because for, as a scientist, you, we can, you know, uh, we can write, we can perform a research. But then, when you are going to communicate results to people affected or to decision makers that have to take the decisions, there are different kind of uh, communication skills required. Sometimes we don't have as a researcher, for example, maybe we are very good in providing estimates, number, uh, uncertainties, but not good to say something to an audience full of mother will children have in leukemia. It's different, uh, trust me. <laughs> Because of, because of a plant or because of a waste disposal site, I mean. So, uh, it, it was really very nice uh, presentation for me. And uh, my, 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 maybe my, I'm looking for your suggestion. Uh, I am trying to compare the literatures on uh, indoor-outdoor pollution and health effect, and especially how land use land cover change changing air quality, that is the objective through the literatures. And I have searched almost 40,000. Still my supervisor is not happy with the numbers. So <clears throat> what are the database you would suggest uh, me to, because I've done a PubMed, World of Sciences, uh, Scoopers, and many others. So around four uh, database mm -hmm. uh, with 40,000 available literatures and PDFs. Still, my supervisor says uh, it is not enough. So what, is, what should be the enough according to your suggestion? I mean. What else? What else? Yeah. Uh, well, I know it's, um, I, I know that it's different. It depends on where you live in the world. Uh, probably ask uh, colleagues, I mean, create a net. I mean, that's the only way. If you don't have uh, access to these resources, uh, it's quite impossible. Because how can you know if a, a, pub, a paper is, is getting published or not? Maybe one idea is to focus your research on other reviews instead of original paper. Because if you start from a reviews, a very good one, inside the reviews, you can already have a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, or, or papers published there. The limitation is that this is not ongoing research. It's finished research, and you would like to move on. So, but I don't understand why can, you cannot go on PubMed because you don't have internet facilities? No, 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 no. I have PubMed and other. Ah, I have read. so let's start with PubMed. In PubMed, the majority of the, uh, of the articles, I mean, probably not in environmental only, but if you look at environment and health, the body of literature present there is, is sufficient. I, I, I know that some technical uh, journals, maybe not, uh, not including health, are not in. Try PAMED and then Google it. I mean, Google. Use Google. Okay. Thank you so much. So, any other issues? So, we, we are done with the question? Huh? Huh? Oh, we're done. Okay, so now no, we have uh, normally a general discussion uh, session. We have uh, 30 minutes for that, so we are comfortable enough. We have discussed uh, already uh, many times, but uh, maybe there are some additional things to share. Uh, for instance, uh, the little game I, I, I asked you to play with us. So you were not, uh, uh, you were less in that game. Huh? I see only... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five of you who are committed to do something after that school. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe you're keeping your secrets. Um, okay, you are the right. Okay, so uh, by the way, maybe we should, uh, we owe you a little um, 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 uh, clarification about yesterday's round table because uh, indeed we, uh, we had you in the, in the room, of course, but we also invited the scientists of ICTP to join in and, and exchange with us. So we had a few of them. We had 
Of course, the organizer, the local organizer, was Filippo Giorgi. You met him at the beginning of the school. He'll, he'll be back uh, for the closure of the school. And there were a couple of two other scientists who I don't know uh, exactly wh who they were. And we had uh, the, the um, uh, press officer uh, or communication officer who was there and was trying to see what she could write uh, from what we were saying. Uh, actually, I, we've checked on the web. It seems she didn't find uh, much to say about what we were saying. But of course, it was more about uh, brainstorming about the issue we have, we're facing. Maybe this is not so, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just uh, adding that we said it was uh, anonymous and stuff. And if they use it, there won't be your names or anything. It was just about the conversation. So we're, they were there, but if they tweet or anything, it won't say it's this name saying that or anything, talking about Egypt and politics or something. So it just uh, it was a discussion with people present, yeah. maybe writing, but without any name. So no, uh, no issue on that, no problem, don't worry. Uh, okay, so maybe... You want to say something, Carla? Francois, you want to say something? Well, before saying something, I would like to have some feedback on, on what, what you've learned, what you feel, what could be a follow-on. Yeah, but uh, what could be a follow-on of this school? Are you all tired? And yes, we are. <laughs> 